so today, I thought I would share a short presentation with all of you on, on uh, what I believe to be a critically important and, and complementary part of every tinnitus sufferer's toolkit, and that's coping tools, uh, strategies, and, and techniques. I know from a lot of the speakers today, you're going to be hearing about habituation and, and research and, and new treatments. So today, I thought I'd sort of complement those other presentations by kind of offering some coping tools and, and, and strategies. Now, successful habituation, uh, regardless of how you choose to approach it, is a process that generally occurs in stages over time and, and spikes and difficult moments and, and setbacks and difficult days are an unavoidable part of that process. And so when you're going through that process, it can feel like you're taking three steps forward and two steps back over and over again. It can even feel like you're taking three steps back sometimes. Learning to manage those difficult moments is crucial to success and so it's important to have a lot of effective tools and techniques and strategies to help you better cope along the way. So today I thought I'd share a few, just a few of my favorite coping strategies that I hope you guys will all find really helpful, uh, regardless of where you're at in the, co uh, the habituation process. So, all right, let's dive in. First, well, when you're first learning to cope with tinnitus, I've, I've found that it's the techniques that improve distraction as well as reduce stress and anxiety are generally where patients seem to have the most leverage and control early on. And so I wanted to start by sharing a coping strategy that can improve your coping outcomes in virtually any situation or environment. <clears throat> so I call this multi-sensory coping or multi-sensory distraction. And the basic idea here is that the more senses and the more of your five senses that you can incorporate into any act of distraction or coping, the greater the likelihood that you will become distracted from your tinnitus. Uh, so in other words, you want to try to combine coping tools whenever possible, especially relaxation tools and techniques. You can always be doing something with your hands, with your body, with your breath, with your mind, with your, with your ears. And so combining tools whenever possible often leads to a better coping outcome. So for example, don't just take a hot bath, which can be very relaxing physically. Take a hot bath, put your favorite album on, uh, light an incense or, or a strong scented candle, maybe do some progressive muscle release or a body scan or take deep breaths, do some sort of breathing exercise all at the same time while you're doing the best, sort of stack and layer these kind of techniques and, and strategies together. Uh, another example would be, don't just go to the park, uh, go to walk around, or, or rather don't just go for a walk, go to the park and walk around, bring your pet if you have one and listen to an audiobook or even an audiobook and masking at the same time. Don't just play a game on your phone or, or, or browse social media on your phone, browse social media or play a game and listen to a podcast at the same time. One of my sort of go-to combinations for anxiety for myself and, and not so much tinnitus related anymore, uh, but I, I often will, will find myself playing puzzle games like Tetris on my phone when I'm feeling kind of stressed or overwhelmed or anxious, and then I'll listen to a podcast at the same time. So sort of one part of the mind can, can focus on the game, and then the other part of the mind is sort of actively listening to, to the content. And between the two, it's, it's, there's le li very little room left to have any kind of negative thoughts or anxiety. So I find that combined Finding tools whenever possible um, is always going to be really helpful and lead to better outcomes. And, and a helpful way to conceptual, conceptualize this idea, there's something that Dr. Ben, I've, I've heard him say many times, uh, which it's an, an analogy for tinnitus that I, that I love so much, which is, I've heard Ben say many times that tinnitus is like being in a pitch black silent room and somebody shining a bright flashlight in your eyes. It's all you can see. It's all you can think about. It's all you're going to notice. Masking is, as Ben says, is sort of like turning lamps on throughout the room. You can still see the flashlight, but you can see everything else now. And so the signal in your eyes is reduced. It's easier to manage. It's easier to cope. And I, and I love this analogy. <clears throat> what, I'm, what I'm describing here, though, in this sort of multi-sensory approach kind of takes that a step further. To, it's sort of like inviting all of your family and friends over into that room for a night of dinner and, and drinks and, and, and dancing and celebration. You could choose to look at that flashlight if you want to, but there's so much going on in that room you're probably not gonna notice it unless you're deliberately looking for it. Uh, and so once again, the more tools and techniques you kind of combine and incorporate, the greater the likelihood you will actually become distracted and start to calm down in an act of, of distraction or coping. Also, one sort of final tip with this, in my experience, it's always best when you're trying to cope or with, with a relaxation technique or a distraction or a combination in this way to hold your effort for longer than you think it will take. Oftentimes when we're trying to become distracted from the tinnitus or trying to use a relaxation technique or a breathing technique to, technique to calm down, it doesn't just happen immediately. Like it takes time with continuous 
relaxation effort before you'll start to experience the relaxation. And the hard part is sticking with the effort when it's not working yet. And so the helpful way to think about this, like one sort of example I often use with my coaching clients is it's, it's sort of like when you're sitting in a car and you're looking down at your phone or reading a book and the driver has to slam on the brakes or, or, or swerve to avoid an accident. Now the driver was in full control at all times. Um, you were never actually in danger, but if you're not looking it, it can certainly feel like you're about to get an accident. And I know at least for me, I'll get like a big adrenaline dump and you know, you look up and you'll realize you're safe immediately in that moment. But the adrenaline doesn't just flush out of the bloodstream instantaneously. It takes like a good couple of minutes, maybe five to 10 minutes before the adrenaline can start to clear out and you can fully start to calm back down. This is happening all the time when we're in fight or flight and having these sort of anxiety reactions to tinnitus. And so holding those relaxation and coping efforts longer than you think you need can often lead to a better outcome. So, okay, that is multisensory coping or, or multisensory distraction as I like to call it. So that's the first strategy I wanted to share with you guys today. Uh, so the next strategy I want to talk about is something that I call preventative coping. Now, most tinnitus coping tools and strategies are designed to alleviate suffering after a difficult moment has occurred in a, in a reactive sort of a way. But there's another way to approach coping, which is to try to prevent difficult moments from happening in the first place. And with a little bit of planning, you can use the same kind of tools and techniques that you normally use to help you better cope when you're having a difficult time to prevent that difficult moment from happening, or at least to minimize its impact. And so the idea for this, it all starts with the fact that I have found that it's very difficult for people to identify their unique tinnitus triggers. There's some big ones like stress and anxiety and sleep deprivation and loud sounds that, that affect everyone. But beyond that, it can be very, it can be very challenging to, to point to something definitively in your life, some sort of dietary factor or environmental factor and say, <clears throat> you know, this, this thing makes my tinnitus worse every time. But what's not as difficult to figure out or what I call or refer to as broader patterns of vulnerability. So this would be like times of day, certain types of situations, certain types of environments, not where you're guaranteed to have a difficult moment, but where you're much more likely to have some sort of, of difficulty, where you're more vulnerable to having a spike or difficult moment or, or anxiety. And when these patterns of results is almost always anticipatory anxiety. So for example, let's say Every day when you get home from work at 5 p.m., like that's a time where you tend to struggle and have anxiety and, 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 and are struggling to cope with your tinnitus as you come home from the workday and get in the house. If that's happening every day, then at four, when 4.30 rolls around and you're still working, you're going to start to think about it. And, and all it takes is just one negative thought that can kind of initiate this sort of chain reaction of anxiety that can manifest that difficult moment. So it's like, you know, all, all it takes, you could be having a great tinnitus day. And all it takes is that one thought of like, oh, wow, like what a great day. Like I hope that five o'clock thing doesn't happen. And that's enough anxiety to kind of set that uh, ball into motion. And it becomes almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. So it's often transitionary points during the day where we see this sort of thing happen. These, these sort of patterns emerge, like going from, you know, work to home, home to work, sleep to wake, wake to sleep, you know, between activities when there's like a lull and in sensory input and we have a chance to stop and notice these sort of moments and notice our tinnitus. And if you can identify some of these patterns, the strategy is to use a very simple coping routine ahead of time, like, and the coping tools ahead of time before the difficult moment occurs. So at 4.30, you would use the coping tools then to boost your defenses. And you're using the tools at a time where you probably don't need them. So you wouldn't have thought to use them otherwise. And the coping tools I recommend in situations like this are the same kind of coping tools that people use after the fact to alleviate suffering and, and stress and anxiety when it's already there. So things like meditation, breathing techniques, uh, relaxation techniques, mind-body techniques, massage, but to use them ahead of time to try to boost your mental and emotional and psychological defenses as much as possible to hopefully eliminate that, that difficult moment from occurring, but at the very least to minimize its impact. Now, now sometimes, just using one tool or technique preventatively can be enough. You know, you just put, even if you're having a great day and you don't feel like you're, you're not wearing maskers, let's say, and you just, you, you don't feel like you need masking that day, just putting on masking at 4.30 so that when that five o'clock time rolls around, if you do notice it, 
part of the volume is being covered and it's not it's not going to be the same sort of impact that it might have been otherwise other times it'll be a combination of things maybe you put on you know you do a meditation or, or stop working take a break do some sort of breathing technique or a meditation you know followed by masking for the next couple of hours and then maybe you do something else to relax when you get home it's not it's not so much about like a specific tool or technique it's 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 meant to be like a new way to think about the tools and techniques that you're already using to try to prevent those difficult moments from happening in the first place. And so on a very surface level, if you can avoid a single difficult moment from happening one time, that's a good enough reason to think about this and kind of assess your own life and, and try to put some thought and energy into figuring this out for yourself. But on a deeper level, if you can avoid a difficult pattern and problematic moment enough times in a row, you can often eliminate that pattern of vulnerability entirely. So if you go two weeks straight or a week straight or, or longer, where you get home from work and you're not thinking about your tinnitus and there is no anxiety or difficult moment, you're gonna stop anticipating it, stop expecting it. And oftentimes that moment can just be eliminated. Not in every case, but it, it's something I've seen over and over again in uh, with my tinnitus coaching clients over the years. So that is my preventative coping strategy. So I, I hope you guys will give that one a try too. Uh, I like this one because you don't really need to learn anything new. It's just about shifting the timing and the use of the tools that are already working effectively for you. For the final coping strategy that I wanted to talk with you guys about today, it's I find that it's, it's, it's helpful at any point in the process, but it's particularly helpful for people who have started to make some progress with habituation and, and that are coping uh, a bit better than they were before and starting to live more fully, but maybe still struggling with their tinnitus some of the time or, or even a lot of the time. And so it all starts with this idea that in the beginning, when your suffering is at its highest point, simply noticing the sound of your tinnitus is something very bad happening. It, it, it triggers like this visceral like emotional, anxiety, physiological response. I always, I kind of, I describe it to my, my clients as sort of like the universe sucker punching you in, in the stomach. It's like this visceral thing that kind of comes out. But as you start to make progress with habituation and the emotional response starts to improve, it offers a chance to stop for a minute and check in with yourself. So the strategy is when you notice your tinnitus and it pops into your mind, Stop for a minute and assess, check in with yourself, sort of assess, am I feeling anxiety? Am I feeling any muscle tension, a change in breathing? Am I having negative thoughts? Am I feeling any kind of reaction happening here at all? Because if the answer is no, then nothing happened. Now, the problem is that because simply noticing the tinnitus meant something or, or was something very bad happening for such a long time, there's like a residue there that, that will persist. And so even as you make progress, simply noticing your tinnitus at a, in a moment can will just sort of on a gut level feel like something bad is happening to you. But if you can notice in that moment that it's not bothering you and you're not activating, simply acknowledge it and then try to get back to whatever you were doing. Try to go back to work or get back to your day. It's likely that your attention will bounce off of it at some point in, in the near future. Now, of course, it is always still possible that you will notice your tinnitus and start to react That's and, and have a negative response. Like this is true at every at, at any point in the process, that's possible. Even after you've habituated, life happens, spikes and, and difficult moments can happen post-habituation. And if you notice your tinnitus and you are reacting, in my opinion, the, the best question you can ask yourself there is what tool or technique or strategy can I use right now to try to calm down and deal with this moment? Speed to tools is like a core meta skill that I think is very helpful in the process of habituating. Shorting, shortening the time between noticing, getting better at noticing the moment when your reaction is starting, and then shortening the time between that noticing moment and the using of a coping tool or a technique. Like the faster you can act with a coping technique before you try to get back to whatever you were doing, you have to deal with the anxiety pattern that's playing out. If you try to just push it out of your attention, it's it's very likely that you're you're going to it's you're going to fail because your nervous system sort of redirects your attention to what it perceives as the source of the stress you're under. And so choose speed to tools is the th is is the answer to that to there. So what what coping tool or technique can I use as quickly as possible to deal with this moment? Now the other thing that starts to happen a lot more as people make progress is they'll notice the tinnitus, they'll notice that they're not having anxiety or a visceral sort of emotional response, but you start to have negative thoughts. I, I think if this is like the next iteration of in the of the problem of tinnitus in the habituation process. You'll think things like, why me? Why now? Why today? Why this? Why that? And the reality of negative thinking is you can very quickly think your way into a full-on emotional state, an anxiety state. And I'll just give you just a quick example. 
uh, of another place where this this happens in our lives. Like ima imagine you you guys are going for a run, like and not just an easy run, but like a full on sprint like exercise. You're sprinting as hard as you can. Think of the physical sensations you'll experience while you're doing that. Heart racing, heart pounding, burning in the legs, gasping for air, sweat coming out of every inch of your skin. These are all terribly unpleasant sensations. But in the context of going for a run, you don't feel like something bad is happening to you. But okay, you go for the run, you come home, you go to bed. Now imagine you woke up in the middle of the night feeling those identical sensations. You wake up in a puddle of sweat, your heart's racing, you can't catch your breath, your legs are burning. It would be the scariest thing that's ever happened to you. You'd, you'd think you're dying. You'd call an ambulance. You'd, you'd probably say goodbye to your family. And though this is an extreme example, on a very basic level, the only difference between how you're feeling when you're running and how you're feeling in the middle of the night is the story you're telling yourself about what those sensations mean, the thoughts you're having. And so this is something we do in all ways and in all parts of our life. And so for tinnitus negative thoughts, here is a very simple but hugely effective, in my opinion, um, cognitive reframing technique to change the emotions of that experience. When you notice your tinnitus and you're starting to have negative thoughts, simply ask yourself, how long has it been since I last felt this way and heard and, and had these thoughts? Because if you just noticed it, a change occurred. You went from not noticing it and being distracted for some period of time to noticing it and starting to have these negative thoughts. Figure out precisely how long of a period of time that was. Maybe it's been, you know, five minutes, half an hour, a day, a couple, a couple hours. However long it's been, it immediately changes the nature of that moment because the default thoughts that come are like, no matter how much work I do, I can't seem to get away from this. It keeps coming back and ruining my life and my day. But if you can suddenly notice like, wow, four hours just went by and I didn't think about it once, that changes it into the noticing of something profoundly positive, the noticing of progress. And you can't really even notice those sorts of distractions until you have it, until it's back in your attention and you look backwards with hindsight. So just very simple sort of exercise. And you can do it when it's bothering you as well. Just how long has it been since I last felt this way? Uh, and, and that often can sort of start to short circuit some of the emotions that would normally come in that moment.